So if the owner is supposed to bring the site and the program to the start of a project, what's your role? Well, your role is really to make sure that you understand the site. So that can mean a lot of different things. One of the possible areas of understanding is just sort of getting a real handle on what's going on with the survey. Uh, understanding what the uh, shape of the site is, what uh, the current built elements, uh, anything that's sort of happening on the site, the important uh, street information, which, uh, where is the utilities, where's the water main, all of that kind of thing, where the uh, parking is likely to be, um, sort of understanding all of the site information as well as the uh, less tangible site elements. So things like uh, climate and uh, amount of rainfall and uh, how many people are walking by and things like that. Now this isn't necessarily something that you would know just off the top of your head, but part of the beginning part of the process is that you're supposed to, once the, the base site information has been given to you, you're supposed to be able to do uh, fairly rigorous uh, um, data analysis to understand uh, what's really happening on the site and therefore what are the elements that are potentially drivers of design. Orientation issues might be important. Which way is the sun going to be coming up and going down and where is the uh, prevailing wind coming from if it's in a cold climate say or where do I get a nice breeze if it's in a, a, a warmer climate. And understanding all of those sort of special characteristics uh, about a site and if it's an urban site what the sort of cultural urban elements are if it's a more rural site maybe it's more about topography but again just understanding the sort of shape of the site it's also it's one thing to have uh, the owner uh, give you the program but you really have to understand the program you have to uh, go through it and make sure that the program makes sense uh, that what they're saying is going to lead to something that's efficient and, and doable. You don't want to be in a situation where, uh, you know, many months down the road when you're trying to get a permit and then everybody comes back and says, well, wait, this isn't what we thought we meant, right? Uh, the beginning of the project is when you go through the program and make any comments or use that as your tool to sort of figuring out how to start the first set of, uh, of questions. We'll talk about the programs uh, in, in just a minute. Another sort of important thing that we'll also get into more deeply in a minute, but is the idea of project delivery. And so this is one of those key early on decision making elements that has a tremendous impact on a number of other elements. So for example, uh, I'm going to have very different contracts if I have a design bid build project delivery versus if I have, say, design build. Right? Those are two very different ways of doing a project, and so I'm going to have different kinds of contracts. I'm going to have different kinds of schedules. I'm going to have different kinds of even documents because the relationship between how you would do a, a full bid set is going to be different than if you're doing something where the design and the building is happening uh, at the same time or overlapping. Uh, so understanding the project delivery will impact a lot of different choices that will end up being important in that early phase of a project. Understanding the regulatory environment. This is another kind of interesting one because the regulatory elements uh, can have obviously a tremendous impact on the possibilities of a site. So if somebody comes to you and says, we have this program, it's going to be really awesome, it's for a 20,000 square foot building and here we want you to do it, and then you take a look at the zoning code and the zoning code says, well, on a site like this you can build to maybe 10,000 square feet. Well, clearly there's something about the regulatory environment and the program that aren't meeting each other, that's not mixing. Uh, that's very important to catch in these early phases, in these sort of planning phases, and not many months down the road when lots of dollars and time have been spent. So understanding the zoning and the building code issues, but also all the other issues around that, that that could be related, and we'll talk about those a little bit later as well in more detail. Another one that's a little sort of more obscure is understanding uh, the kind of labor and material issues, um, the opportunities, the risks, the limits uh, of these uh, topics in a given locale. There might be uh, issues of uh, maybe you're working on an island and it's hard to get materials there and so you have to think about well what would the logical set of materials be? How can we sort of start limiting the design thinking so that it fits to the sort of logic of the uh, available material choices or the, or the cost efficient material choices? But it also might be something of just understanding that you know, some places are going to have very high, highly skilled 
uh, Finnish uh, carpenters and Finnish tile setters, and other places may not. You may not want to base your design on something that just there's not a local labor force that could fulfill. Uh, some places are going to be more uh, steel structure. Some places are going to be more concrete structure. Uh, you don't need to force a concrete structure into a steel town and then therefore pay a lot more money because there's not a labor pool that is easily set up to, to build it. So having that kind of understanding, at least to a preliminary extent, to be able to make sort of logical, efficient, early decisions so that those early decisions play out in a logical way uh, as the design goes through is very important. This is one of those things that you're supposed to be able to bring to the table. Uh, now you may, part of that may be that if you may be working in a place that you don't know that well, so then part of your role is to actually find that information out and partner with people who, who can fulfill that information. And then a very important aspect of what's expected from you uh, in those uh, kind of early thinking is this sort of understanding of the cultural context. So, you know, what does that mean? Well, it can mean a lot of different things. It depends a lot on the type of project. It depends a lot on the locale that you're trying to build a project in. Uh, but some of the sort of obvious ones are uh, just the pattern of building, the types of buildings, ways that uh, uh, people have found in that locale uh, things that are important. So it may be preserving open lands in certain areas while it may be uh, building right on the corner in certain urban areas because you want to maintain the street edge or something along those lines. Those are sort of cultural characteristics that uh, you're trying to work with uh, that you want to make sure you're not designing something and then trying to shoehorn back into a cultural situation that the design doesn't make any sense with. So you're trying to figure those things out, lay them out early on up front, and that's part of the planning process. Another element of the cultural context is just understanding this idea of precedent and pattern uh, and sort of meaningfulness of the decisions that you're about to start making. So if you're designing something that is, say, for a commercial application, and there's a very important uh, sort of hierarchical aspect that they uh, are very big on, then you want to make sure that the sort of cultural aspects of that hierarchy where there's a very clear center and then there's maybe elements that satellite around it and the entryway is very obvious, like that's sort of a, a kind of bubble diagram of a uh, way of thinking that is uh, part of that sort of cultural context, the cultural context of the client maybe or a cultural context of that type of user. Uh, it might be very different for a different type of user. It might be uh, more of a campus concept uh, for certain kinds of settings, right, where people can kind of meander through. Uh, that's a very different sort of base idea. There's an early decision-making idea that's going to start to show up in the very beginning. So you start having a way to design around these kinds of issues. So you're using the program, you're using the cultural context, you're using the sort of project delivery method because that's going to impact all these other choices. And you're thinking about, well, how does this fit with the regulatory, the zoning codes, the building codes, uh, all the other potential codes that might be in place? Uh, and then also, what are the efficiencies that I can gain just by knowing the locale? Like, is it hard to get uh, a lot of concrete high up into the mountains? Or uh, is it better to use uh, uh, steel in uh, situations where I'm going to get uh, more, more of a bang for the buck because there's a lot of steel uh, capacity around. Uh, those kinds of questions are all part of that early mix of decision making, which is what PPP is really about. So when you start looking through the exam, sort of think of it in these ways. It'll be a way to sort of start categorizing these elements and that's how you're going to start making your, your answers and your decision making is because you're trying to figure out, well, what are they looking for in this context? And in this context, they're looking for what would be drivers of design, what would be the initial things you would want to know in order to start the design process. Now, none of this is actual design, right? Just because you've decided that you're going to go with a steel structure doesn't mean you've decided that it's going to be 28 feet bay or uh, you know, 15 feet tall, anything like that, or uh, just because you've thought about the zoning code and figured out where the building limits are doesn't mean that that's exactly where the wall is going to go but it's that set of information that is the thing that um, holds the design thinking. It's the base table of information for uh, how you're now going to start thinking about the design. Uh, so that's what this exam is really about, and uh, we'll go through a number of these issues uh, in more depth as we go along in this topic.